Hi there, welcome to this video. This is Tina from TinaHills.com and if you have an Aries ascendant, a Scorpio moon and a Scorpio sun, da -da -da -da, then this is your video. What can I say? You are all about, no I won't say all about Mars, but you are so much about Mars. Mars rules Aries, Mars rules Scorpio and of course Pluto but Mars is the sole ruler of Scorpio so do you see you have your Sun and Moon Mars is your sole ruler and of course Aries sole ruler is Mercury so you want to pursue higher wisdom and Mars is about that pursuit right now you have your ascendant in cardinal fire change and newness and flux and shifts Sun moving into Aries, coming of spring in the Northern Hemisphere. A time of growth, a time of uh, vibrance, a time of radiance, a time of hope, a time of renewal. Now, Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. So, it is the infant of the zodiac. Okay? And uh, you have your ascendant degree here. So, Understanding Aries is very important for you. This is your soul karma. Now, your moon and your sun are both in the 8th house conjunction. So, um, this is quite a challenge, if I may say so. It, it, it could be alchemized, transmuted to higher vibrations, of course. But it is a challenge to work through in life. After 34, things should get better. Okay, now let us understand the Ascendant and discuss Aries in detail before we get to your Sun and Moon. Now the Ascendant is the degree of the Zodiac rising on the eastern side of the horizon at the moment of your birth. And for you, this, this is Aries. And the sign on which it falls is the rising sign. For you, your rising sign is Aries. We often say Ascendant rising, but they actually mean... Uh, their meaning is slightly different. Ascendant is a particular degree. Rising sign is the whole sign. So if you have an Aries a rising sign, when you walk into a room with your purposeful stride, people perceive you through the, the lens of Aries. The Ascendant is kind of like the Jungian mask we wear. It is the persona we assume and how society perceives us. Okay, it is, it is um, our physical body, the way we look. It's a sum total of our being in 3D. And, and this is so very important because that, that walk into that room tells people you're Aries. That edgy look in your eyes tells people you're Aries. You're not afraid to look at someone, stare someone down. You're not afraid of intimidating someone with your eyes. That's Aries. And people see that. That is the first thing they see. And uh, as I was saying, that Aries is the infant of the zodiac. And a lot of it's um, trials and tribulations and shadow uh, work that you have to do with Aries is about the infant growing up. So Aries can be selfish. All infants are selfish because they understand self-preservation. But as Stephen Forrest, the eminent astrologist, said that the goal of Aries should be enlightened selfishness. How do you put this to work? Aries is the archetype of the pioneer. As you're out there starting new things, new things, one after the other. You need movement, swift moving, swift metabolism. You know, be careful. This could mean accidents. Be careful of what you put in your stomach as well. Why? I'll tell you. Now, uh, so can be agitating fires of Aries, but don't think they'll be soothing. This is the domain of Mars. Mars is about conflict, okay? But it is also not just about conflict. It's our action principle. Without Mars, we won't do get anything done. Yes, Mars is a malefic, but without Mars, we won't get anything done. So now, uh, but, 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 Aries, the sole ruler of Aries is Mercury. So Aries is not just about Martian conflict. It's also about uh, higher wisdom, higher truth. Okay, and uh, this is something that you need to gradually work uh, 
through and, and understand the, the soul lessons of Mercury and higher wisdom, higher truth and the pursuit of it. Um, ill balance, Mars can see, Aries rules the head by the way. So this part is very much in focus, your eyes. Remember I spoke about the edgy look, very well defined features, ruddy complexion, mostly short hair. Uh, men, women like to keep it that way, more testosterone, squarish bodies, lot of energy, lot of energy. If not used, can lead to impatience, restlessness, violence, anger, you know, being accident prone, hurting yourself, falling, all of that. Um, and uh, very, very well defined facial, sharp, pointy. You may not have compassion in your eyes. That's something you need to develop. Now, uh, with the difficult, if you have a difficult sixth house, you can have all issues with digestion and nervousness. Virgo is your sixth house. So be careful of what you put in your stomach. It can result in headaches, cluster headaches, migraines. Uh, Aries, your hair can be brittle or it can fall out. You know, so much fire, not always good for the hair. And you have to see how Mars is split. Say you have Mars in the sixth house, cusp. Then it is possible that uh, you can suffer from anxiety related issues, hypertension, you know, high BP and uh, stuff like that. Okay. Aries rules the head. So any kind of problems there will result in um, ENT issues, glasses, uh, sensitivity to gum and tape, power, headaches, persistent acne lot of restless energy so you have to work out be careful when mars is making difficult aspects to your natal mars be careful of freak accidents fires road rage driving under the influence and whatnot be mindful of guns and heavy machinery and stay away from fights and road rage now sun moon conjunction in the eighth house of scorpio the moon does not do well in scorpio it is the most uh, no second i would say it's the second most difficult placement for the moon first is gemini here moon uh, i mean cannot express herself you know and uh, she feels too turbulent it's too turbulent if i may say so in the sign of scorpio for the moon uh, maladjusted this can wreak havoc <clears throat> scorpio is the eighth sign eight eight house is all about death rebirth taxes all things hidden <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry other people's money whoever's got my voodoo doll don't do that now I'm making youtube videos but <laughs> you know <coughs> so other people's money all of this can be a problem you know and so moon is your mother it's your emotions it's how you connect it's your psychic awareness your esp your the sense of telepathy and you have both sun moon conjunction conjunctions are good unless otherwise indicated the harmonious flow of energy two planets on top of each other uh, calculating the orb if you can have a wide conjunction or a tight conjunction the sun moon are nevertheless exchanging energies moon's your mother sun's your father so both of them could have been secretive could have been an occult this is very very much the sign of the witch and the cult and the occult and um, dark, nefarious, as well as uh, esoteric, you know, all shades is what I mean. Nothing is just black or white. Scorpio understands that. They understand, they, they, they like to dig deep. Pluto is their uh, uh, exoteric ruler, Mars and Pluto, and so ruler is Mars. Some say even Mercury. So here, Scorpio is about digging deep sun moon together meaning there there could be a balance between your emotions and your outward goals sun is the father the outward projection of of your internal key the the alchemy you create your goals your ambitions so moon mother sun father synthesizing nicely uh, or it may have been turbulent also conjunctions as i said could mean problems too 
okay now eight how there bar there it's a problem by itself and moon and sun both in very problematic both in fall actually in uh, scorpio so how do you work through this energy it's not an easy energy to pivot through Scorpio is about about uh, digging deep for the truth. The truth is metaphysical. Actually, this is archetype of initiation in esoteric astrology. This is the path of the disciple. Okay, I mean in Capricorn, the the disciple starts to walk that path, but in Scorpio, the 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 disciple must be reborn from the fires. And become that phoenix and resurrect so there is a lot of, of clairvoyance maybe going on eighth house Scorpio Sun moon uh, you may be profession for you psychologist investigator private investigator you can be crazy the Scorpio will help you complete an Aries is going to give you that that Scorpio Aries are both absolutely ruthless when they need to be they're not afraid they are not cowards, both of this. So you're definitely very, uh, very much of an adrenaline junkie, if I can say so. If you're not balanced, this can wreak havoc in your life. If you have an imbalance to Mars. So learn to work with the energy of Mars. There are many, very many remedies and meditations and crystal healing therapy and affirmations that you can work through to balance Mars in your life. You may begin by invoking Mars to to open his secrets to you. This is even if, if you're male, female, we both have male, female polarities within. And Aries and Scorpio, Scorpio is female and Aries is male, but I consider Scorpio to be very, very male as well because of Mars and Pluto and uh, all of that. So that was a bit about Aries Ascendant and Scorpio Sun and Scor uh, Scorpio Moon and Sun Conjunction in the 8th. So if you like that, subscribe please. Leave me a comment if you don't like it. And let me know what you think. Thank you. Bye.